Okay, now I told you guys I was going to do a video separate for the 1979 expansion draft, and I am. Here it is. You ready? Let's go. <clears throat> the 1978-79 season being the last year the WHA played, um, it was a year that saw the Indianapolis Racers drop out 25 games into the season. Just well, They weren't financially viable. Uh, the Edmonton Oilers end up with a 48-30-2 record. Uh, the Hartford Whalers, 37-34-9. Quebec Nordiques 41, 34, and 5. The Winnipeg Jets 39, 35, and 6. What I've got on the board here is hockey cards of the Oilers, the uh, Whalers, Nordiques, and Jets. So it's Louis DeBrusque, because it's Louis DeBrusque, <laughs> Link, Nick Caprios, Owen Nolan, and Keith Kachuk. And of course, Oilers, Hurricanes, Avalanche, and Coyotes, because three of the four teams that came in from WHA got moved. I think part of the reason that it was easy to move them is because the NHL didn't go there. The NHL found it easier to say, ah, this just doesn't work. I remember when the third of the three teams moved and they asked uh, Gary Bettman, what's the problem? And he said, I can spell it in three letters, WHA. So right there is Bettman saying, yeah, it's WHA teams. So that's kind of a thing. Uh, now, going into... The process of joining the NHL, they have priority selections. So they're allowed to say, we want to keep these players. But at the same time, NHL teams that own the rights to certain players who had signed contracts in the WHA, well, once the WHA is gone, those contracts no longer exist. So those teams got their players back. And that's where things get really bad for Winnipeg. But there's more to it than that. Because Winnipeg fans will say, oh yeah, we got robbed in that draft. But there's more than that. Gretzky signs a 20-year contract with Peter Pocklington. He signs that 20-year contract because he doesn't want to go into the entry draft and end up a member of the Colorado Avalanche, who are now the Colorado Rockies. See, that's the thing. Right now, there's a team in Denver that is just awful. Gretzky's like, I don't want to go there, so he signs a 20-year contract with Pocklington, which I don't think either side ever intended to honor. Just that way, they could say, we have a 20-year contract, and the NHL will go, fine, keep Gretzky. Otherwise, Gretzky would have gone into the draft. Now, we have a team in Colorado currently, which is the Avalanche. But it's a much more solid and healthy franchise than the Mickey Mouse team that was in Colorado at the time. You guys will get the reference there. There's so many different references with this, so many cross-references. Uh, who did they lose? They lost Doug Berry to Colorado, Wes George to Detroit, Dave Semenko to Minnesota, who they would get back, Dave Langevin to the New York Islanders, and Risto Siltonen to the St. Louis Blues. So that's, that's the number of players, and again, they would get Selton and back, but they lost that amount of players. Uh, they also tried to claim priority selection on Bent Gustafson, and the NHL said no. Bent Gustafson hadn't played any regular season games for the Oilers. He came over and played two playoff games. The idea being they get him into two playoff games and go, hey, look, he's an Oiler. And John Ziegler, president of the NHL at the time, looked at that and said, yeah, that's, that's not a real thing, and no. You, you circumvented the rules to try to get Gustafson into your lineup. No. So Gustafson joins the Washington Capitals. And if you're a Capitals fan, you know how key that is. Gustafson will play a role in restoring, or creating at least, uh, a, a decent team in Washington. Uh, Lee Fogelin is the one, new, one, one guy they got in the expansion draft. So they lose all these players. They get Lee Fogelin back. There's a lot of other names, guys like Pete Lepresti. But in terms of guys who actually became Oilers of, of note. Lee Fogelin's the guy. Now, at the draft table, they're drafting 21st. They're drafting last. That's right. These four teams come in. They get players taken from them by NHL teams. And the next step is, you guys are the last four teams to draft. So you're an expansion team, but you're the last ones to draft. This is why I don't qualify this as the same as other expansions. But the Oilers are smart. At 21st overall, they draft Kevin Lowe. At 48th overall, they draft Mark Messier. And at 69th overall, they draft Glenn Anderson. So if you're going to lose players, hit it out of the park at the draft table. And they did. The Oilers were crazy good at the draft table. And that would continue the following season as well. Now, Hartford, who will be Carolina someday, the, of note, they lost Rick Lee and got Rick Lee back. So they lost Rick Lee to Toronto, and then Toronto didn't protect Rick Lee, so they got Rick Lee back. Rick Lee was a first-team All-Star that last year in WHA. Now, I like Rick Lee as a defenseman. He's not a first-team All-Star. At the draft table, number 18 overall, they draft Ray Allison, and in the second round, second round, they drafted Stuart Smith. 
So if you want to get into why certain teams did well after this was done and certain teams didn't, look at the draft table. The Hartford Whalers are drafting ahead of Edmonton twice. It's Ray Allison over Kevin Lowe, Stuart Smith over Mark Messier. Uh, the Quebec Nordiques, they traded their number one pick to retain Real Cluche. Now, Cluche had scored 126 points or some insane amount the year before with Quebec, so they didn't want to lose him to Chicago. That number one draft pick became Denny Savard. Whoops. Um, Elan Cote uh, ends up going to Montreal. They would they would get him back. And Dan Jeffreyon, the son of Boom Boom Jeffreyon, goes to Montreal. So those are the players they lost. But at the draft table, they made hay. Number 20 draft pick is Michelle Goulet. Number 41, Dale Hunter. Again, they're drafting after Hartford both times. And Anton Stastny was picked up with the number 83 draft pick. Pretty solid draft picks. And I have to think, you know, here's here's the Oilers picking two guys who are going to score over 1,000 points. Here's Quebec picking two guys who are going to score over 1,000 points. And Hartford not doing that. So Quebec would have a good run in the mid-80s. The Oilers, of course, would be a dynasty. And it is set up by their draft table. So good management will help. And if you notice, coming in, the Oilers and the, the, the Nordiques were the better teams. And the Oilers didn't lose as much as Winnipeg. Winnipeg, who are now Arizona, 39, 35, and 6, as stated. Uh, they ended up winning the last AFCO Cup, so let's touch on that. The New England Whalers beat the Cincinnati Stingers in the quarterfinal, which is just one series. The semifinals, the Edmonton Oilers beat New England in 7. And then the Winnipeg Jets swept the Quebec Nordiques. In the finals, the Winnipeg Jets... Uh, they, they won it in six over the Edmonton Oilers. The final goal in WHA history scored by Dave Semenko against Gary Suke Smith. So it's it's an interesting run. Winnipeg wins the Avco Cup to finish things out. And what happened to them? Robbery. Kent Nelson is claimed by Atlanta. Bobby Hull is claimed by Chicago. Terry Roskowski claimed by Chicago. Glenn Hicks and Barry Long are both claimed by Detroit. They reclaim Bobby Hull from Chicago. But it is largely symbolic, because Bobby Hull's at the end of the line. The year before, so the year before this, and winning an AFCO Cup will kind of hide what had happened to them, but they had lost Alf Nilsson and Anders Hedberg to the New York Rangers. So the Rangers pick up Nilsson and Hedberg from the Winnipeg Jets, and the Winnipeg Jets then lose Kent Nilsson. That's a lot of offense going out the door. At the draft table, at number 19, they draft Jimmy Mann. At number 40, they draft Dave Christian. At 103, they draft Thomas Steen. 124, they draft Tim Waters. Now, Waters becomes a decent defenseman. Christian, a decent forward. And Thomas Steen, very good player. But they're not in the same category as this. And Jimmy Mann, as a number one draft pick, was a flop. So, again, coming out of this draft, Winnipeg gets hosed big time. Hartford doesn't do themselves any favors. Gordy Howe's at the end of his career. They move Mark Howe to the blue line. Mark Howe actually is a first-line left-winger the last season that the WHA is in existence. And Edmonton is building towards a dynasty. It's, it's weird what the NHL did here, that they said, okay, you guys are coming in. Well, we're not going to let you keep your roster together. We're just going to give all the, the teams back to all the players back to teams that own the rights before they went to the WHA. And then we'll do an expansion draft for you as an expansion team where the guys who are exposed are nowhere near as good as what we're asking you to get, what we're saying you're going to have to give up. And then at the draft table, you're going to be the last four teams to draft. It looks vindictive to me. It, it does. And yet, Quebec and Edmonton made the most of it. While when we look back historically, three of the four teams have been moved. There you go. The 1979 expansion draft. Um... I'll, I'll include this in the playlist of the historic videos. Uh, I'm doing the 78-79 season tomorrow. I just wanted to get this out of the way today. So there you go. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And hey, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.